So as I moved into my house many, many years ago, almost embarrassed to say how many years ago it was, I had a bunch of books that were in my garage and uh, over the last, uh, uh, almost slipped up and said how many years, over the last um, a certain amount of years, I've started to go through the garage and start to rescue some of these books to uh, put them in a proper place so that they can potentially be read, those that I have not read. So I'm gonna just show you a little bit about this uh, not really a book haul, but sort of a book haul because they're books that I haven't really connected with in a lot of years. That's coming up next. So actually of the books that I'm gonna go through in this book haul that's not really a book haul, I've only read about three of these books. So it's actually gonna be kind of interesting to go through some of these because each book that I acquire, uh, especially these that I've had for a long time, some of them I've had since high school, uh, it's really interesting because each book had something that probably hooked me and going back through them is going to help me to kind of figure out maybe why I was hooked on that book in the first place. First up is a book by um, a legendary writer, James Baldwin, uh, Nobody Knows My Name, again by James Baldwin. And so um, James Baldwin's Nobody Knows My Name records the last months of this famed American writer's 10 year self exile in Europe. His return to America and Harlem, his first trip south at the time of the school integration battles. It contains Mr. Baldwin's controversial and intimate profiles of Norman Miller, Norman Mailer, Richard Wright, and Ingemar Bergman. And it explores such varied themes as the relations between Negroes and whites, the role of the Negro in America and in Europe, and the question of sexual identity. So um, this is, uh, sounds like a really powerful read. I think it's gonna end up being one of my classic reads here. So this is actually one of those like smaller books here. You can see uh, I've got pretty large hands and so you can see uh, kind of where it fits in my hand. It's actually a pretty, look at that, uh, 50 cents for a book. Uh, try to find a book that's uh, new for 50 cents nowadays. Um, it's 190 pages long. I um, mean, as you can see, the copy's kind of packed in there a little bit, but still a relatively fast read. So looking forward to at some point uh, being able to knock this one out. This is probably a book that I could knock out in maybe a day or so. Next up, I'm gonna knock out two at the same time because they're by the same author, a legendary author that I'm pretty sure everybody in the world has probably heard of, and that is William Shakespeare. And they are Julius Caesar and Romeo and Juliet. So these are two books that I've had since high school and I've actually never read either of these books. And to be honest with you, I've never read Shakespeare at all. And I'm actually kind of embarrassed to say that, but I've actually never read Shakespeare. Now I've, I've uh, read uh, different um, sort of like Cliff's Notes versions of certain uh, Shakespeare stories, such as like Othello, um, but I've never actually read Shakespeare and yet I have two of them right here so I'm actually kind of looking forward to uh, maybe uh, reading some of these at some point they're actually not particularly long um, as as these books types tend to go so uh, I might look for maybe looking forward to uh, checking these out the new <laughs> new revised editions okay maybe they were new and revised when I was in high school I'm not sure um, how much they are uh, at this point so looking forward to uh, potentially reading some Shakespeare in the near or maybe not so near future. Next up is A Fountain Filled with Blood by Julia Spencer Fleming. And kind of interested in this one uh, because I think right off the bat I can tell why I was probably interested in this. Uh, so the kind of sub headline right there reads, Small Town Murder, Big Time Trouble. Nestled in the heart of the Adirondacks, Miller's Kill, New York interesting name for a town, I don't know if that's a real town or not, is about as safe as it gets. That's why Episcopal Minister Claire Ferguson is shocked when the 4th of July weekend brings a rash of vicious assaults to the scenic town. Even Claire's good friend, Police Chief Russ Van Alstyne, is shaken by the brutality of the crimes, especially when it appears that the victims were chosen because they were gay. But when a third assault on an out-of-town developer ends in murder, Claire and Russ wonder if the recent crime wave is connected to the victim's controversial plan to open an upscale spa in Miller's Kill. But not all things in the tiny town are what they seem. Soon Claire and Russ are left to figure their unspoken attraction to one another, even as they uncover a labyrinth conspiracy 
that threatens to turn deadly for both of them. So, so it's kind of interesting. You got some uh, different kind of uh, plots and subplots going there um, that uh, makes for a kind of an interesting story. So I can kind of see why I picked it up there. Um, yeah, it says uh, the beauty of a small town is only skin deep. So looking forward to uh, maybe uh, checking this out at some point. We'll see. Next is a book that I've actually read, but I read it a long time ago, The Cutting Hours by Julia Grice. Um, it goes like this, uh, stalking, the obsessive pursuit of a woman by a man who will stop at nothing to possess her. So, sounds really interesting there. Um, the stalker in this novel is a teenage boy who can't decide whether he wants to stalk a woman sculptor or her 16 year old daughter. But when opportunity arises, he breaks into the sculptor's home, kills the babysitter, and takes the daughter on a murder spree. The suspense builds. That was one of the reviews uh, on the back of this book. And uh, I'm trying to see if it can tell me when I actually read, actually bought this. Um, but it's, uh, I've had this book for, I would say at least 18 years. I've had it for quite a while. So, uh, but it sounded really interesting when I first picked it up. And then when I read it, I really liked it. Uh, I, I would be hard pressed to tell you that I remember everything about this book as I read it, but I remember that I was really uh, entertained by it. I thought it was a really interesting read and I, and I really enjoyed it. It might be a reread someday. Next up is Miami Purity by Vicki Hendricks. Um, Charisse Parlay has had a string of wrong men and her only professional skills are the kind one picks up dancing in Miami bars. So she jumps at the chance to work at the Miami Purity Dry Cleaners, especially when she's introduced to the boss's son. Payne looks legit, acts legit, and he sounds legit when he tells Sherry he loves her. But he may just be different kind of wrong man. The kind who can't take a lover without turning her into his accomplice in a crime spree that only begins with murder. And continuing the small town theme we got going on right here is Small Town Odds, a novel by Jason Headley. So I picked this one up. I think I picked this one up at a um, kind of a, um, one of those bookstores that you can go to. Um, I went to uh, this mall uh, outside of Detroit and uh, they had these uh, inexpensive books. And I think I picked this one up at that uh, particular store. So let's see why I may have picked this particular story up. All right, let's see. A warmly funny debut novel reminiscent of Richard Russo's fiction. Small Town Odds revolves around lovable but self-defeating Eric Mercer. Having abandoned plans for college, 24-year-old Eric is living in an excruciatingly small town in West Virginia, working two part-time jobs, taking care of his daughter, getting arrested, and seeking and avoiding romance. In a single hectic, hilarious week, his old girlfriend, the high school's big game, presumably well-intentioned friends, and the gorgeous mother of his daughter all converge, propelling Eric to unavoidable decisions. Small Town Odds is about making family with those you have and about making yourself into who you want to be. It is about accepting both your past mistakes and your present predicaments. Author Jason Heatley has written a wonderfully charming, insightful, and graceful novel. So it sounds really good there. You got some uh, plots and subplots, relationships, uh, maybe uh, one of those complex, maybe a love triangle type thing going on. And of course you got uh, a young child that's involved as well. Small town dynamics. So lots going on in here. Small town odds by Jason Healy. I'm gonna go ahead and split this up into two parts of this video because this is gonna go on for a while. So I'm gonna make a part two for this video. So stay tuned for that.